Hello and good time of day to you. I've received an inquiry about a situation that should be resolvable using just the two equations shown here, as was the case with my previous investigation of series-wired light bulbs. The first is often called Ohm's law, and it says that the voltage across a resistance is equal to the product of the current flowing through it and its resistance. The second says the power in watts dissipated by a resistance is equal to the product of the current flowing through it and the voltage across it. If you don't know why this is, give the name of this channel some thought and you'll be at least part way to the answer. However, I'll leave a complete explanation for another day. The inquiry is about a number of miniature diesel engines and in particular devices called glow plugs. These are small electrically powered heaters and in the engines in question they are used to warm the engine prior to starting to make sure the temperature produced by the compression of air in the cylinder is high enough to ignite the fuel when the engine is first started. The glow plug is turned off once the engine is running. The inquirer has a number of different types of glow plug but I've picked one to use in this example. The glow plug contains a simple resistance wire that gets hot when current flows through it. I'm told it's designed to be connected to a 1.5 volt power supply. Normally two parallel connected D cells are used. The parallel connection is to allow for sufficient power to be supplied at the fairly high current required. Unfortunately the D cells discharge rapidly in this application and so cannot be used to start an engine very many times. The question is whether a 2 volt lead acid gel cell could be used instead. The inquirer has tried connecting several of his glow plugs directly across this cell and found that they ran too hot and one even burnt out. Could a series resistor be added to limit the power output of the glow plug and if so what type of resistor would be required? I haven't had access to any of the glow plugs nor the 2 volt cell. However, I asked for the results of a couple of measurements, namely the voltage across the glow plug and the current through it when powered by the two D cells. The answer was 3 quarters of a volt and 1 and a half amps. Multiplying these gives the power output of the glow plug 1.125 watts. I'll make a couple of assumptions that won't be perfectly true, but hopefully they'll only introduce a small error. Any error they do cause will tend to lower the power output of the glow plug and so at least it won't be damaged by overheating. The open circuit voltage of the gel cell is 2.09 volts. I'll assume the voltage produced by the cell will be exactly 2 volts when loaded by the glow plug. This type of cell can supply a very large current and usually has a low internal resistance, so this should be a reasonable assumption. I'll mention the other one shortly. If you want the glow plug to operate at the same power output as when it was connected to the D cells, then calculating the required value of the series resistor, R question mark, is very easy. We can label the diagram with the current through and the voltage across the glow plug necessary for it to dissipate 1.125 watts. The voltage across R question mark must be 2 volts less than 3 quarters of a volt across the glow plug. There is no possibility that the current through R question mark is not also 1.5 amps, and so with these two values known, the resistance of R question mark can be calculated using Ohm's law. However, I'm told that at this power output, the glow plug is a little cooler than it ideally should be, and so the engine warms up rather slowly. Let's try to calculate a value for R question mark that will slightly increase the power output. In practice, it is probably acceptable to start with a value determined as just described, and then experiment with slightly smaller resistances until the desired result is achieved. But I'd like to be a bit more formal. This time I'll start by using Ohm's law and the 3 quarters of a volt and 1 and a half amps to calculate the resistance of the glow plug. Note that this result is only correct when the glow plug is at whatever temperature it normally reaches when it's dissipating 1.125 watts. And of course this temperature will vary a bit depending on the environment the glow plug is in even if its power output isn't changed. The resistance will change if the temperature changes, almost certainly increasing in resistance at higher temperatures. If I knew what material the glow plug's heating element is made from, I might be able to correct for this change. However, my second assumption will be that the glow plug's resistance is always half an ohm when it's operating. 
Hopefully this will be reasonable, so long as the power output isn't increased or decreased too much from 1.125 watts. If I had the glow plug, I could connect it to a variable power supply and work out a more accurate value for its resistance at any sensible power output. But I haven't, and so this assumption will have to do. Let's aim for a power output of 1.5 watts. This must be equal to the voltage across the glow plug multiplied by the current through it. From Ohm's law, the current through the glow plug, and so the entire circuit, must equal the voltage across the glow plug divided by its resistance. Substituting this for I in the first equation, and solving it to find VGP, reveals that the voltage across the glow plug to two decimal places must be 0.87 volts. Now the voltage across R question mark can be determined. It must be the result of subtracting the 0.87 volts that falls across the glow plug from the 2 volts put across the entire circuit by the cell. We now have enough information to calculate the current by dividing the voltage across the glow plug by its resistance. Finally, the necessary resistance of R question mark can be found. It would be useful to know how much power will be dissipated by the series resistor. This can be obtained by multiplying the current through it by the voltage across it. The inquirer has told me he has several 0 0.3 ohm ceramic resistors, each rated for a maximum dissipation of 5 watts. I suggest using two of these in series for a total resistance of 0 0.6 ohms. The power lost as heat in each will be about 1 watt. It'll be interesting to find out whether the power output of the glow plug is close to the target of 1.5 watts when this circuit is wired up. I've received some feedback following my calculated recommendation. You're looking at a photograph of the glow plug, and it's been connected by its owner to the cell via the two resistors, as I'd suggested. I'm told the current was measured to be 1.7 amps, about what I'd predicted it would be. However, the glow plug was still not quite as hot as ideally it should be, so it was tried with just one of the 0.3 ohm resistors in series. Apparently this brought it to just about the ideal temperature. If you look closely, you can see the red glow from the heating element inside. In this case, the current was measured to be 2.3 amps, and the voltage across the glow plug 0.77 volts. Multiplying these gives the power output, just under 1.8 watts. Interestingly, Using the new measurements to recalculate the resistance of the glow plug gives a result of about 0 0.3 ohms. This is lower than the 0 0.5 ohms determined from previous measurements and is a change I wasn't expecting. Most metals increase their resistance as they get hotter, but the opposite seems to have happened here. However, some alloys do behave this way and so the result needn't be a mistake. It means extra care should be taken when experimenting with powering this glow plug as such heating elements can easily be destroyed by a process called thermal runaway. This can happen should the element get slightly hotter than it's designed to. The falling resistance causes an increase in current, and so the element gets hotter, lowering its resistance further, causing it to get hotter still, and so on until it melts and breaks. The voltage directly across the cell's terminals was found to be 1.95. Using all the measured values to calculate the series resistance, that we already know should have been 0 0.3 ohms, gives the result 0 0.51 ohms. It's quite possible the resistance of the connecting wires and of the multimeter's current shunt, which although not shown, was part of the circuit, account for the additional 0 0.2 or so ohms. Finally, here's one of the small engines that requires preheating with a glow plug. The glow plug is the silvery metal part screwed into the top of the engine. It's a slightly larger type than the one that has been used as an example in this video.